In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Welcome. Today is the last in our Novena Reflections leading to the Great Solemnity of Pentecost, which begins with First Vespers this evening. Let us pray. Let us bow down in humility at the power and grandeur of the Holy Spirit. Let us worship the Holy Trinity and give glory today to the Paraclete, our Advocate. O Holy Spirit, by your power, Christ was raised from the dead to save us all. By your grace, miracles are performed in Jesus' name. By your love, we are protected from evil. And so we ask with humility and a beggar's heart for your gift of charity within us. The great charity of all the hosts of saints is only made possible by your power. O Divine Spirit, increase in us the virtue of charity, that we may love as God loves with the selflessness of the saints. Amen. Today we're uh, filming early in the morning because of a pastoral situation that uh, Father John Zagarella has to attend to later in the day, but it will be uh, shown again at 11 and of course available on YouTube. So um, today, as we end the, the Novena, uh, the readings that we've been hearing in the Easter time are always also coming to an end. In other words, we've been on this story of the Acts of the Apostles that begins in Jerusalem at Pentecost. So it's like T.S. Eliot says, when we come to the end, we find we're, we are at our beginning. And um, uh, so that we see that... Um, this journey of the Jerusalem com Jewish Jerusalem community winds up with Paul arriving in Rome where he is under house arrest. And it says, for two full years, Paul stayed on in his rented lodgings, welcoming all who came to him. With full assurance and without any hindrance whatever, he preached the reign of God and taught about the Lord Jesus Christ. And also, the Gospel of John is coming to an end. And I will read that. As Peter followed Jesus, he turned around and noticed that the disciple whom Jesus loved was following, the one who had leaned against Jesus' chest during the supper and said, Lord, which one will hand you over? Seeing him, Peter was prompted to ask Jesus, But Lord, what about him? Suppose I want him to stay until I come, Jesus replied. How does that concern you? Your business is to follow me. This is how the report spread among the brothers that this disciple was not going to die. Jesus never told him, as a matter of fact, the disciple was not going to die. All he said was, suppose I want him to stay until I come. How does that concern you? It is this same disciple who was the witness to these things. It is he who wrote them down, and his testimony we know is true. There are still many other things that Jesus did, yet if they were written about in detail, I doubt there would be room enough in the entire world to hold the books to record them. Now, this is a fascinating way to end a gospel because, in fact, it's a great te uh, case test uh, for family systems. Um, here is uh, Peter, who has just been asked to follow Jesus, and the first thing he's concerned about is somebody else getting something. So... Um, but we're not going to go there today. Uh, where I want to go is with this, this conclusion of the gospel that, in fact, it's not complete. That is, that there is more to be revealed. I doubt there would be room enough in the entire world to hold the books to record them. And that is a critical role of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, for 2,000 years, continues 
to open up the scriptures and lead us deeper into them and to see the great breadth that they have. So, for example, when, when the faith and reason come together, science and religion, it's the spirit that is present to both. The spirit is present in the library, in the classroom, in the laboratory, in the minds of poets and artists and musicians. That is the spirit who is showing all those other things that Jesus could not do in one lifetime, but that is present in his word that is in us. So it was that spirit which was working at the beginning to expand the minds and hearts of his first disciples who really saw themselves as a, mo a Jewish movement following Jesus. And then this surprise which demands new things of them that to their unexpected mind, uh, not in their minds not expecting, the Gentiles are coming. And so the rest of the Acts of the Apostles from this uh, original Jerusalem experience is of, uh, especially of Paul, um, encountering this uh, reception of his message by the Gentiles. And, and that, so what we see is that the Acts of the Apostles begins in Jerusalem, and where does it end? It ends in Rome. And of course, the rest of the story is how it goes from Rome to the ends of the earth. It's uh, interesting, we might see in, uh, when Pope Francis was elected, he said the College of Cardinals had to go to the edge of the world uh, to find a bishop of Rome. I, I want to uh, close this uh, novena by uh, referencing uh, this uh, illustration that is in the, the lobby of the Abbey. Uh, and I'm, I'm sorry that uh, I hadn't thought earlier of putting it up here, because it is an illustration based on the classic icon of the Pente of Pentecost, because the Acts of the Apostles says that the men and women disciples are together with Mary at prayer waiting for this coming down of the Spirit. And we see these tongues of fire. But what we see that Pentecost is not just 2,000 years ago, it is an event today. And how do we show that? We show that, for example, the Pentecost were experience in history because it illumined Augustine and Norbert, and, and, and I'll come back to Dalesford Abbey right here, but what in our own history as Norbertines of Dalesford Abbey, that word that began in Rome went eventually to, to Holland. And so this abbey of Bern in, in Holland, which is the longest existing community of men in the Netherlands, founded the year that Norbert died in 1134. In 1893, they came to Wisconsin and eventually we have St. Norbert Abbey. And from St. Norbert Abbey, we have this tradition coming to Dalesford. And that spirit of, of, of Pentecost, it's in physicians. It is in peoples of all ethnic races. It is in Kateri Tekawitha. So it, we have to say, how is that happening in our homes, our families? How is this happening in our church, in our society, which more than ever in our lifetimes is in need of this gift of the Holy Spirit as we reemerge, as we reopen our churches, as uh, Archbishop Perez wrote in his letter, come home, come home. So we hope that this has been of some uh, assistance to you in your mind and heart and prayer. These nine days of asking for the Holy Spirit, who has never been gone, but asking for a renewal, a new birth and outpouring of the Holy Spirit among us. We hope that we, you will be able to celebrate that, was, that, that gift of the Holy Spirit in whatever way uh, comes to you and us in the days flowing from Pentecost. And so we pray. Come Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle on them the fire of your love. Send forth your spirit, and they shall be created, and you shall renew the face of the earth. Renew in our days the gifts of healing among those who care for the victims of COVID-19. 
Keep in your care all medical personnel who put their lives at risk for us. Bring inner healing to those afflicted, eternal peace and light to those who have died, and the consolation of your love to those who grieve the loss of a loved one. O God, by the light of the Holy Spirit, did instruct the hearts of the faithful. Grant that by the same Holy Spirit we may be truly wise and ever enjoy his consolations. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless us all and the world, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.